second song. If I press corner in three, two, one. Hello, good afternoon everyone. We hope you had a wonderful holiday. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. And as we begin another year and go back to our work, it is also timely to fuel our minds as we continue on improving uh, and building our capacity for online distance education. It is time for our third webinar and we are pleased to welcome you all. Again, my name is Roel Paras, the Training and Development Officer of De La Salle University, Das Marinas, and I'll be your host together with Dr. Graysela Mejia for today's learning session. Before we start our webinar, once again, I would like to present the rules that we have to observe during this online engagement. This webinar is recorded. The use of Q&A chat to ask questions will, uh, will be observed later on. When asking questions, please introduce yourself and the institution you represent. Regarding the registration, if you have not yet registered, please register using this link. The information in the online registration form will be used to give you an account in the LSUD's learning management system. This will be the platform where you can access the webinar resources, give feedback, and get your e-certificates. You will receive an email that contains your username and password. You will only need to register once for the entire webinar series. Now to get your e-certificate, watch out for the access code that will be given before the end of the webinar. It will be shown both in the presentation at, and at the announcement. Log in to this link, go to access, click enroll, input the access code, you can either, number one, go to the modules and look for the webinar education, evaluation module rather, or two, go to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to your profile. We have some tips for our attendance encountering audio problems. So number one, kindly check your device audio if it is turned on. If you are using earphones, headset, check if it is properly connected. If it is still not working, use the built-in device speaker. Check your internet connection. Restart your internet and your device if needed. You may also exit the event and rejoin again. Kindly check if audio is working on other application. If you are, uh, if you are not using the MS Team application, we suggest you download and use it to participate in the webinar. And lastly, if using laptop, go to your MS Team profile, then to settings, devices, and select the appropriate audio devices or speaker. Now, to formally start today's webinar, let us have our opening prayer. Let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Holy Spirit, Amen. Strength and wisdom, all that 
St. John Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. much. So once again, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon to everyone. It is Wednesday once again and we're back to our webinar series. We are so grateful to welcome all of you to our webinar entitled Education Technology Tool for Synchronous Session. As part of our academic collaboration with the Commission on Higher Education, this learning engagement is brought to us by De La Salle University Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research through the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. And now to give his message, let, let us welcome the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research of De La Salle University Das Marinas, Dr. Marco Saez. Thank you, Ruel. Uh, good afternoon to you and good afternoon to all, to all our participants. Happy New Year. I'm sure everyone is excited to meet their students again and conduct synchronous sessions as this is maybe one of the most looked forward activity uh, by the students and, and also by the teachers. And I guess it is very understandable because unlike asynchronous sessions, the synchronous session would immediately give you that feeling that you're talking to someone else other than the screen in front of you. You would be able to either um, get the chance to feel the emotions of, of your teacher, of your, of your classmates through their voices or through their facial reactions. That is why I think it's important that this event that a lot of people would look forward to is something that we should prepare for and not waste uh, time uh, in. Um, I think uh, technology has made so much advancement that it could actually allow us to make that synchronous session very productive and very worthwhile. I just, from the point of knowing the, the capabilities of your students through the metrics that it provides up to the point of arranging so many activities that sometimes um, if done manually would be very limited. I just hope that as a takeaway, since I think at the end of each survey you would have a takeaway, you would always bear in mind that what we want to enhance is learning and that technology alone is not an end by itself. It should be a means towards enhancement of learning and ultimately that is what we would like to achieve for today's seminar to enhance learning through the use of technology and not through technology alone. Sometimes we're very much drowned with so many opportunities to make our, our, our class very exciting that we forget to, um, to really achieve that main purpose and that is learning. So I hope that is something that we would always uh, uh, remember and be at the forefront of our consciousness when preparing for our, for our lessons. Shout out to the new attendees. Um, among others, uh, to, to those coming from EAC, e 
So good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to today's seminar. I also hope that you take note that all of you have taken note of the reminders that Roel gave a while ago as far as the audio is concerned. Um, that is something that we have noticed so far since webinar one, and we're working on that. We're working on that, and hopefully when we reach the last webinar, everything will be smooth and fine. So please uh, relax and learn a lot. Um, we have competent speakers to share with you their experiences uh, about online learning. Mabuhay po kayo lahat. Thank you so much for Marco. Thank you very much. Yes, at this point, we would like to give the, would like to acknowledge our participating schools. I am not sure if my presentation is working, but at this point, my screen is um, not moving, but I will be proceeding with the presentation of our uh, participating schools. I hope I was able to present to you the, the presentation because I have the logo there, but um, by the way, we would like to welcome all our participants. Once again, I would like to mention the name of the schools. We start with Abra State Institute of Science and Technology, the Asian Institute for Advanced Studies, Adventist University of the Philippines, the Arnold Jensen Catholic Mission Foundation Incorporated, Batanga State University, Neta, DMMC Institute of Health Science, Don Bosco Technological College, Mandaluyong, Pilamar Christian University, La Consolacion College, Baholod, Laguna State Polytechnic University, the Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cavite, Madalag National High School, Pramaklay, Madre Gidita Martelli School, Manila Adventist College, Marymount Academy of Paranaque, Marvelous Faith Academy of Macoor, Mindoro State College of Agriculture and Technology, Mountain Province State Polytechnic College, National University, National College of Science and Technology, Rizal College of Taal, San Juan de Dios Educational Foundation Incorporated, San Sebastian College Recoletos, Santa Isabel College Manila, St. Jude College, St. Anthony de Carmele Academy Incorporated, University of Negros Occidental Recollectus Baholod. We'd also like to uh, greet our friends from the University of Perpetual Health System, Dalta Molino, University of All right, I'm sorry about that. So for the gap, I think I am on mute and I was not able to show the presentation, but once again, I hope this time it will work and I'm, I hope you can hear me now. All right, so once again, here are the participating schools. Okay. So we welcome all our participants, especially those who just joined us today, especially the Emilio Aguinaldo College, Cavite. And for the online engagement tools and reminders, especially for those who just came in, once again, we would like to present to you this one. Again, the webinar is recorded. Please use Q&A chat for our question and answer portion later on. 
Okay, when asking for questions, kindly introduce yourself. For the registration, here is our reminders once again. And then to get your certificate, there will be an access code that we will be showing later on. So please stand by for that access code. And once again, for um, those who are encountering audio problems, here are some tips. So please check your device audio if it's turned on. If you are using earphones, headset, check, plus, uh, kindly check if it is properly connected. Check your internet connection. You may restart your internet, internet, exit the event and rejoin again. Check if audio is working on other apps. If you are not using MS Team apps, we suggest you download and use it. Uh, okay. And then if you are using laptop, go to your MS Team profile, settings, device, and select the appropriate audio devices speaker. All right, so that is our reminders. And now for our um, resource speakers, uh, may I request Ms. Um, Grace to please help us to introduce our resource speakers. Ms. Grace. Hello, Ms. Grace, can you hear us? Can you? I think we are having some difficulties. Hello? Yeah, yes, Ms. Grace, we can now hear you. Good afternoon and Happy New Year. It is my honor and pleasure to welcome our two resource speakers this afternoon. So our first resource speaker is the current training and monitoring coordinator for Office 365 utilization of DLSED, specifically the Center for Innovative Learning Programs. And she is also um, a full-time faculty member of, of the Computer Studies Department of the University. Um, she is, she is also um, a Microsoft Innovative Educator, a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert, and a Certified Microsoft Office Specialist. Our, our resource speaker is also a Certified Microsoft Technology Associate and a Wakelet Ambassador. Let us all welcome Ms. Roda N. Sanares. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Grace, for that wonderful introduction. So let me uh, share to you my presentation. Okay, so allow me to introduce myself to you. So I am Roda N. Sanares. I am a full-time faculty from the Computer Studies Department. And under the College of Science and Computer Studies, I am also the Training and Monitoring Coordinator for Office 365 Utilization uh, from the Center for Innovative Learning Programs. And our webinar topic for today is all about uh, education technology uh, tools for synchronous session. And, and my topic is all about uh, Microsoft Teams and uh, game kit that is for video conferencing and assessment tools for synch uh, synchronous sessions and for my topic outline for today so i have here two parts number one is the ms teams all about uh, microsoft teams 
a sort of introduction, the video conferencing tools, such as I'll give you a short comparison in the data usage of the video conferencing tools. Also, uh, all about intro, uh, uh, all about the Microsoft Teams, and then for the uh, for the part two, I will give you an assessment tool uh, for synch synchronous session, which is a game kit. So, um, getting started with game kit, creating accounts, steps in creating kits, and also um, later po will play uh, will play yung game po um, tungkol po kay game kit. Okay, so. Um, our new real, uh, re, reality now that coronavirus has set the world online. Ano po ba yung mga new rea reality natin ngayon nung dumating yung coronavirus natin uh, dito sa atin? Okay. So, starting last March 2020, up to now, we are experiencing a work from home as the nationwide lockdown in the country continues. So with, uh, video conferencing is quickly becoming a standard practice for employees around the globe. Even in the government sector, the sessions are online, just like the session uh, held last March 23, 2020. Um, a huge uh, video screen shows members of the lower house of the Congress participating in special session in, uh, via video conferencing. And not only that, also in attending um, attending to church. Some of the worshipers cannot go personally to church, um, but they can watch the services stream on YouTube. And also in attending school, okay, as people around the world stay home to prevent um, the coronavirus. So some of us is uh, uh, uses uh, video conferencing tools to attend to our uh, virtual, virtual classes. And not only that, so I know a lot of you watch the NBA games. So ang ating pong uh, panonood ng mga NBA games is online na rin. Okay? And with all of those uh, events and activities here, so COVID-19 has made almost everything virtual. Which is very true. Kung, kung titignan po natin, halos lahat, nag-attend po tayo ng wedding, nag-attend tayo ng binyag. So talagang uh, lahat is virtual na and even online na talaga. Okay? So to give you a, a quick uh, background of what uh, video conferencing platforms ang, ang meron po tayo ngayon, we have here um, two uh, trusted sources. So uh, we have from TakeRadar.com. Ang TakeRadar.com po from uh, TakeRadar, ang top one po nila na top video conferencing platform is the GoToMeeting. Followed by the Ring Central video and then uh, the Microsoft Teams and also the Google Meet. And then pang five po nila is yung, Microsoft, uh, yung Zoom confer uh, video conferencing natin. And then from dgcommunications.com, so ang top one nila na ginagamit or, or uh, from the survey, the top uh, video conferencing platform na ginagamit po majority is the Zoom, followed by the Microsoft uh, Teams, and then the GoToMeeting, and then Skype for Business, and then yung last nila is the Easy Talks Meetings. Okay? That. Ano ba yung nakikita natin common denominator? Uh, bakit nagiging possible yung pagpunta ng mass, uh, panonood ng NBA, ng NBA games, um, pag-attend ng klase? So, of course, uh, with the use of uh, video conferencing platforms. But I know a lot of you is concerned about the data usage of uh, the one-on-one -on -one call, especially nga yung video conferencing. Okay. So I have here a uh, data comparison of uh, some of the, the video conferencing platforms na uh, mas, mas ginagamit natin. So this is from the following trusted sources po from the www.mobileengine.com and the whistleout.com.au. So um, by the way, ano ba yung tinatawag nating data consumption or data usage? Okay. So it is basically the amount of data you use whenever you use your phone's internet connection to perform any task, browsing the internet, downloading, and running application. So 
Actually, um, depende yun kung ano yung um, um, the actual data consumption na ginagamit natin in each audio or video call or a meeting. Again, this will vary based on several factors. So, pwedeng uh, through your video layout, your video resolution, the video frames per second, and even will vary in stream quality nung ginagamit natin. Okay? So, I have here the overall uh, data comparison, data comparison of the video conferencing platforms na ginagamit natin sa ngayon. Okay? So from uh, dun sa trusted source natin kanina, as you can see, so meron po tayo ano na dyan, overall data comparison. Yan po yung platform natin on the first column. So one-on-one -on -one call, kapag one-on-one -on -one call lang yung ginagamit natin, so ang pinakamababang data consumption is the Skype, which is 225 MB, followed by the Discord and the Messenger, 400 MB, then the MS Teams, 675 MB, the Google Meet, 1.4 gig, and then yung Zoom, medyo mataas po, uh, high yung data consumption niya, which is 1.62 gig per hour. Okay, one-on-one -on -one call lang po yan. Then, if um, we make use of video conferencing na, ang top one is MS Teams. Okay, we have 450 MB per hour, and then followed by Discord. Discord po is very popular sa mga gamers natin. So, marami po tayong gamers out there na ito po yung kadalasang ginagamit nila. And we can use Discord din. So, we have 800 MB per hour din. And then we have a third messenger, fourth is Google Meet, and then Zoom, 2.4 gig per hour. And pinaka makonsumo in terms of video conferencing si Skype, which is 3 point gig per hour. So, kung medyo nagtitipid po kayo with your internet, uh, with your um, uh, data consumption nga, with the use of your cell phone's um, Wi-Fi, so medyo uh, malaki po talaga yung kinokonsumo ng uh, nung ibang uh, platform natin. Pero iba naman, if um, kayo po ay hindi naman po sa sa uh, hindi kayo uh, gumagamit ng inyong um, connection uh, ng inyong uh, phone's connection and you have your monthly subscription naman um yan hindi naman po natin worry itong ating uh, data consumption okay so that's why uh, i'm here to introduce to you microsoft teams so majority of us yung mga nagtuturo po in our university uses microsoft teams because this is already integrated in our LMS, which is the school book. And um, yun nga, part of my discussion is, of course, um, uh, siya po ay medyo mababa yung data, ang pagkonsumo ng data niya. Okay? So, paano ba gumagana ang Microsoft Teams? Okay, actually, we have a video tutorial ng ang, ang lahat po na ipapresent ko sa inyo in Microsoft. Ayan po yung link natin. And uh, for you to manage and create Teams. Okay? And then, uh, syempre, before uh, natin introduce MS Teams, allow, mo, allow me to give you some parts muna ng MS Teams para familiar tayo kung ano-ano ba yung mga nakikita natin dito sa uh, uh, UI or user interface ng MS Teams. So, number one, so yung sa left side po natin, we have the up bar. Ang tawag po natin dyan is up bar. So, dito po, uh, nag-navigate tayo ng mga various sections in Teams. From the top, so makikita nyo po, we have activity, chat, Teams, assignments, calendar, calls, files, and the ellipsis. Yung dot, dot, dot. Okay? Activity, this is where you find the mentions, replies, and other notifications. Kung halimbawa pong merong nag-reply dun sa chat mo, so nakikita natin yan. And then chat, so chat is where you see your recent one-on-one -on -one or group chats and your contact list. Teams displays all the teams you are a member of. So kung halimbawa, marami ka nang nagawang teams for your classes or sa mga colleagues mo, sa mga kasamahan mo, so makikita natin yung iba't ibang teams dyan sa teams. And then also, we have the assignments. So, kung we have, uh, for example, teams na in uh, sa klase natin, we can, we, can, we can use this assignment um, for giving assignments to them. And then also, calendar. So, ang calendar naman po is also, uh, ginagamit natin yan. Um, kapag kahalimbawa, marami na tayong meetings, nakasync naman yan with our Outlook calendar and displays our upcoming meetings. Calls, ayan po yung mga one-on-one -on -one call natin sa colleague. Files naman aggregates all files from all the teams you are a member of. So, kung halimbawa may in-upload na file, 
si si teacher or si student so makikita po natin din sa files and then yung ellipses kung wala po lahat sa app bar diyan po natin makikita si ellipses like for example yung mga apps na most common or mga ginagamit natin like kunyari yung Microsoft Stream OneNote, Planner, Power BI, so nandiyan lahat siya sa ellipses. And then, number two, we have the team section. Ayan po, yung nakaturo dyan, team section, shows the list of the teams who are currently a member or owner. Okay? So, dito din po, sa teams natin, um, meron din tayong number three, channel. So, a channel daw is a dedicated section within a team to organize conversations and tasks into specific topics or projects. So, within a team, pwede po tayo mag-create ng mga channels. Like, for example, yung sample po natin dyan, I have a team named Capstone Project. Pwede natin siyang lagyan ng mga channel para doon na pupunta. Kanya sa proposal defense or final defense, doon po na pupunta yung mga conversations and tasks na kailangan nilang ma-accomplish or yung mga pinag-uusapan nila. And the number four command bar, if um, may hahanapin ka or mag-query ka ng apps, so, para rin siyang search bar na pwede tayong maghanap dyan sa command bar. And the number five, tabs. So, sa tabs natin, meron tayong mga default tabs available. The general, post, file, class, notebook, assignments, and grades. Okay? So, click lang natin yung mga tabs para ma-redirect ma ma tayo kung ano man yung hinahanap natin sa MS Teams. And then, as you can see, sa dulo po ng tabs natin, we have the plus symbol. So, para naman, para saan po yung plus sign? So, plus sign tabs allows you to add shortcuts to content in Teams. So, kunyari, uh, gusto mong um, ilagay na sa MS Teams yung uh, MS Stream para nakikita na nila yung mga recorded uh, classes mo. So, possible na mag-add din tayo ng tabs. Or kunyari, PowerPoint, OneNote. So, pwede tayo mag-add. And then, we do have also the, the, the channel conversation. Displays all the conversation in the selected channel. So, makikita lang natin yung mga uh, conversations ng mga estudyante natin. And then, the compose box, yung po nakikita nyo sa baba, kung halimbawa we want to reply to our student, kung may sasabihin po tayo, simple type lang natin dyan. And then, makikita na po ng mga estudyante yan. Siyempre, after typing, meron tayong tinatawag na send icon, yung arrow right po natin dyan. Okay? And then, lastly, we have the meet icon. Okay? So, turn your conversation into meeting na with few clicks. Okay? So, yan po. Pwede na tayo mag-start ng ating MS Teams. Okay? But before that, we need to create first Teams. So, uh, hindi tayo pwedeng mag-conduct agad ng online classes without a team. So, I have here four easy steps in creating Teams. Okay? So, syempre, with uh, creating Teams, apat lang naman yan for easy steps. So, number one, go to the app bar. Yan po sa left side nyo, yung nakabilog po dyan. Click nyo lang si Teams. And then, yung pong arrow natin na gumagalaw, so you have to create a team. Okay? And then, step one pa rin. So, makikita nyo kapag kinlik natin yung create team, uh, yung team, so meron na po tayong another uh, uh, button dyan na kailangan natin i-click para makapag-create na tayo ng team natin. Okay? So, as you can see po, yan po yung akin. So, medyo marami na po yung ating um, uh, teams. Okay, so again, click the create team button. And then step two, so pipili lang tayo kung anong team type. So if we are educators, pwede po nating uh, piliin yung class. So uh, ideal po yan for discussion, group project, and assignments. But we have we do have other uh, uh, team types naman, the PLC, the uh, Professional Learning Community for Educator Working Group, staff, school administration and development, and others. Yung others po, uh, pwede yan sa mga estudyante natin for clubs, study groups, or other activities nila. And then, so step three na po tayo, so you have to provide the class name. Okay? Pero in description kasi, that is optional. Pero if you want to include one, mas okay po para hindi po tayo nalilito kung ano ba yung klase o ano ba yung team na ginawa natin. For example, I have your Capstone Project and my description is for BIT41 Capstone Project Virtual Meetings. And then, all you need to do is to click Next. Okay? And then, ayan na po. So, syempre, you have the, the team na. Ang lalagay naman natin dito is sino ba yung pwede natin i-include sa team natin. Possibly, of course, is the stud are the students and teachers kung meron kang co-teachers. So, dito start typing the name of your student and then lalabas na siya. And then, kung andyan na siya sa list lahat, 
you can you may now uh, click the add button to add students or pwede niyo rin siyang skip we have your skip button kasi later naman pagka nag-manage tayo ng teams natin posible pa rin na makapag-add tayo kung ba may nakalimutan tayo or may may late enrollee so pwede pa rin natin yang gawin okay so yun po ang ating four easy steps on uh, creating links so kapag na-create natin yan, automatically makikita nyo po, yan po ay nakabilog dyan. So I created na a new team name Capstone Project with an avatar, yung pong nasa yung icon niya na CP for Capstone Project. But then, later then pwede natin i-edit yung team natin. Okay? So yan po, pag nag-manage po tayo ng teams, ang makakatulong sa inyo dito is yung ellipsis, yung dot dot dot. Okay, so to manage teams, click dot dot dot, ayan po, andyan po lahat, makikita natin, we can manage, add channel, add member, leave the team, edit team, get link, manage tags, and delete the team. Okay, so we can also add channel, so kagaya niyan, in Capstone Project Team, so pwede po tayo magdagdag ng dalaw, uh, either ilan pong channel na gusto nyo, kunyari, kagaya kanina ng example ko, pwede ka mag-add ng proposal defense and final defense, possible yon as channel para meron siyang separate tasks or conversations na magaganap within that team. Okay, so click the add channel. And then, you have to provide uh, three lang naman, which is the channel name, the description, and the privacy. Channel name is, of course, the name of the channel. Description is optional. And then privacy, pwede kasing private yan and standard. Okay, so accessible to everyone on the team, yung... Um, uh, usually na ginagamit natin for the standard, pero if you want uh, private, pwede naman natin siyang um, i-put into private. Okay, and then simply click the add button. And then, ayan po, as we can see, magkakaroon po tayo ng uh, channel within the team. So, name pro uh, proposal and final defense. Okay. And then, if we're going to edit naman, kunyari, we want to edit our team. Possible pa rin yun. We have the edit team sa manage team. So, we can edit the class name. Okay? And also, the class avatar. Yung nakikita po natin, yan po, kung, kung gusto nyo pong palitan si avatar, pwede natin siyang palitan. The grade level and the subject. Okay? So, kunyari, uh, instead of uh, primary, iba yung nalagay mo. So, pwede natin palitan yan. Or medyo hindi related si avatar to your class name, pwede natin siyang E add, uh, e edit, okay. And um, add member. So if konyare kagaya nung sinabi ko kanina, we uh, we forgot na mag-add ng member or may mga late enrollee na hindi natin na add initially. So pwede pa rin tayo mag-add ng member, okay. And then ganun pa rin yung process, same process, same dialog box. So makikita natin, we have two tabs here, the student tab and the teacher's tab. We're in simply type uh, the name of the student or the, the last name of the student and then mag appear siya. And then, uh, click the add button. Okay? And then, ayan, so kunyari, we have a new member, she, she, si Ma'am She. So, pwede din tayo mag-edit ng kanilang role. Okay? So, uh, for example, si Ma'am She is gagawin ko siyang um, uh, co-owner ko. So, pwede ko siyang gawing owner. O kaya, from owner, gagawin ko siyang member. That is possible. Okay? And then, um, yan. Kung halimbawa, uh, we're ready na to conduct a virtual class, uh, paano natin ipapaalam sa mga estudyante natin yung link? para ma-redirect sila dun sa ating MS Teams meetings. So, meron tayong get link to team. Okay? Automatically, pag kinlink natin yan, ayan po yung makikita natin, makikita natin yung URL or yung link. Kung, kung, kung ano ba yung link para makapag, uh, makapasok yung mga estudyante natin sa, sa virtual class nila. Okay? So, all we need to do is to copy the link. Okay? So, kagaya po kami, usually, minsan sa calendar, naka-set naka, uh, na kami for the, the meeting or the synchronous meeting namin. So, yung iba, nagpo-post dito po. Ito po yung aming school book sa newsfeed namin. We're in, uh, pwede nyo pong i-paste dyan yung link na ginawa nyo for MS Teams. But, uh, as you can see, medyo mahaba, di ba, yung ating uh, URL dyan. So, later, I'll give you hip, uh, tips kung paano natin paliliitin yung mga long URL natin. So, yan po. And then, kapag ka sinend natin yan sa mga estudyante, so at least uh, manunotify na po sila about the uh, their synchronous session. Okay? 
So, ganun po yung pag-post uh, natin, nung link natin sa sa uh, klase natin. Or kung sa iba po, gumagamit kayo ng email, pwede po natin i-attach din yung URL natin, yung link natin sa email nila, or sa ibang platforms na ginam ginagamit natin in video conferencing. Or kung paano po kayo nag announce sa klase na inyong synchronous session. Okay? And then, ito po, um, para lumiit yung ating long URL. So, kagaya ko po, I'm using bit.ly for uh, long URL. So, kanina, di ba, we have the long link. So, copy lang natin siya. And then, go to www.bitly.com. Okay? And then, pwede po kayo mag-create ng account doon. So, this, uh, ang akin po is free lang. So, nagagamit naman siya. So, copy nyo si link and then paste doon po sa box na nakikita nyo. And then, i-create nyo na. Pagka kinlik natin si create, automatically nakakustomize na siya into short URL. And then you may now copy the link, yung maliit na link, yung short URL natin. And then pwede yun din ang ating i-paste sa ating announcement. Okay? So for example, uh, updated na sila, informed na sila, ito na may link na for the uh, synchronous session. So, paano naman mag-join ng team? Okay, so, syempre, hindi sila makaka-join sa team without the link. So, syempre, if you have the link, all you need to do is to click the link. And automatically, mara-redirect into the MS Teams apps. Uh, pwede po kayo mag-download ng MS Teams na apps or pwede naman uh, web uh, web app or uh, window, uh, any, any web browser. Okay, and then click join. Ayan, click join. Okay, so... Ito naman po yung ating UI for the MS team. So, kunyari, we're ready na to meet our students. So, usually, ito yung una nating nakikita kapag ka nagpunta na tayo doon sa teams natin. So, uh, dito, pwede nating i-edit yung settings ng computer natin, computer audio, yung mic natin, yung speakers natin, and even para ma-check natin yung, back, yung, yung cam natin. So, kagaya dyan, naka-off yung cam natin, pwede nating i-turn on yan, and then pwede tayo magpalit ng mga uh, virtual backgrounds natin. And if you're now ready, na-check mo na si audio, si, si mic mo, everything na kakailanganin in on virtual meeting, pwede ka nang mag-join now. Okay? So here is the the UI of uh, MS Teams. So meron po tayong meeting timer. Ang meeting timer po natin ay ginagamit uh, para nakikita natin, 'di ba? Uh, gano'n na ba tayo katagal during a certain meeting. Okay? And then aside from the meeting timer, we have also the show participants. So yan po 'yung nakabilog. So ito, this one naman uh, enables you to see all the pre, uh, the the present participants in a certain meeting. So makikita nyo lahat sino ba yung mga nasa meeting na. So kagaya po diyan in my uh, example. So in this meeting, one lang yung 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 uh, yung participant pa that is ako lang ang present pa diyan. So dito naman, so kung makikita nyo din if I show the participants, so I have here 26 na. So sa 26 sila po yung present dun sa meeting na kinandak nyo, synchronous session. Okay? And then we have also the show conversation. So that is the meeting chat for this meeting. So if for example, uh, ayaw nilang mag-on ng cam and mag-unmute, so pwede nilang itype yung mga tanong nila or kung may mga uh, clarifications or kung ano man ang gusto nilang sabihin. So yan, meron po rin tayong meeting chat kay MS Teams. Ray Sand function, ayan, napakaganda po niyan, especially uh, sa ating mga sudyante, kung medyo may makukulit po tayong sudyante, kung halimbawa um, may mga magtatanong, ayan, pwede po sila mag-raise din ng hand. The usual sa ating ano, diba, face to face, pag may magtatanong, nagtataas ng kamay, so dito din may raise hand din tayo. We're in, uh, pwede po natin acknowledge yung student natin pag nag-raise ng hand para malaman natin ano ba yung uh, gusto niyang itanong o may clarifications ba sila. Okay? And then this one is uh, the new feature of MS Teams, the breakout rooms. Okay, so uh, I think uh, this one uh, na launch uh, last December 2020. Okay, so parang uh, pag nag-attend ka, di ba, kunyar ng isang conference at gusto mong uh, hati-hatiin yung mga, yung mga attendees sa bawat room, so possible na siya. Or kunyari, sa, sa subject ko, na Capstone Project, uh, merong groupings. Okay, so itong group na to, tatlo per group, yan, pwede ko silang hati-hati uh, and per room na magkakaroon sila ng time na sila lang yung mag-uusap-usap. And with this kasi, ang maganda rin is monitor mo as organizer. Kunyari, I am the organizer, I am the teacher. So nakikita ko, I can I can go to their room and maki ma makinig din ako kung ano ba yung pinag-uusapan nila dun sa, 
sa room na yon. Okay? So, dito, actually, ang room settings natin, maximum of uh, 50 rooms ang pwedeng, uh, ang, ang pwedeng um, ma-accommodate ni MS Teams. And then, ang maganda rin is, uh, for the participants, pwedeng automatic mag-assign ka uh, ng participants sa bawat rooms or manually. Isa-isa mo siyang ilalagi dun sa room na yun. Okay? And then, uh, meron ding ellipsis pa, yung more options, dot, dot, dot. So, this one naman, napakadami niyang uh, function din. So, number one is the device settings. So, ang, ang device settings is, of course, for the audio, mic, uh, video, yan. And then, meeting options. So, sino magbabypass ng lobby? Uh, mag-a-announce kapag may callers na gusto mag-join or mag-leave or kung sino yung makakapag-present. Parang setting siya ng meeting natin. Okay? Then meeting notes, maganda rin siya. Kung halimbawa you, you don't have the notebook with you, pwede dito ka mag-notes, mag ng notes. Okay? And then meeting details, for example, may isang estudyante late dumating and gusto niyang makuha kung ano yung URL ng link natin, yung link ng ating meeting. So pwede natin pumunta dito sa meeting details para makapi natin yung link for the meeting. And ito yung maganda with uh, MS Teams. So, nakikita natin yung gallery, mo, yung gallery mode ng MS Teams natin. So, nakikita natin yung mga estudyante natin. This one is a uh, large gal gallery mode in MS Teams. So, ito misan ginagamit ko siya kagaya niya during my synchronous session last uh, September 12, uh, September 22 sa MEB15 ko. So, uh, I see to eat na before ako mag-start ng, ng, ng discussion ko. So, pinapa-open ko yung cam nila. And then, nag-screenshot ako. Yan. Okay? This is a sample large gallery mode in MS Teams. And ito din, bago din siya, uh, the together mode in MS Teams. This one naman is September 2020. Payata siya na launch. So, parang the together mode stands for ano siya. Parang sama-sama uh, pa rin kayo, di ba? Na mukhang nasa iisang room lang kayo. Yan. Though, kahit na virtually ano kayo, disperse yung location nyo. So, at least pagka nakita natin itong together mode in MS Teams, parang nasa isang uh, uh, room pa lang uh, din tayo. Nasa isang uh, room settings pa rin tayo. Okay? So, this one is uh, my, ano, my screenshot din sa student ko. So, yan yung together mode ng, um, uh, ng classico. Okay? And then, ito maganda rin with MS Teams, the background settings. We can apply background effects kay MS Teams. So, if you're worrying, kunyari, ang gulo ng likod ko, ang daming kalat, ganyan. So, pwede natin gamitin itong mga virtual uh, backgrounds natin with MS Teams. So, meron po tayong mga predefined or uh, na pwede pamalian kay, kay MS Teams. But if gusto niya i-customize yung background, kagaya ng gamit namin ngayon, so pwede rin yan. So, ayan po, kung makikita nyo sa ilalim ng background settings, we have plus, add new. So, i-add nyo lang yung um, picture. Okay, and then you may preview the, the background and apply, turn on the video. So, as easy as that. And then, yan po, you can toggle on and off your camera and even yung mic. So, usually, kapag ka nag-enter uh, nag po tayo ng isang meeting, um, kadalasan naka-off muna yung camera and naka-mute muna tayo. Okay, pag po may slash, that means off. So, kagaya yan, yung ating camera is off, yung ating mic is unmuted. So, pwede kang... Um, magsalita. Okay? And then, ang maganda rin kay MS Teams is the share content. So, kagaya ng ginagawa ko, I can easily uh, share screen kung ano man yung gusto ko in-present sa klase. So, nagiging possible siya. Okay? And then, the live meeting, of course, kung tapos na yung klase, don't forget to hit the live button yung red. Kasi, uh, yung iba nakakalimutan na mag-live dun sa meeting. So, yung bot. Okay, so that's it for the video conferencing um, platform that the, the MS Teams. Now, ito po, um, to keep your students engaged and um, connected with you during the class, kasi kung nagka-classic ka, panay discussion, di ba? So, why not try GameKit, okay? So, that is a remote learning, but actually engaging, engaging uh, game learning platform, okay? So, if you're familiar with Kahoot or Quizlet, parang ganun siya, pwede po natin itong gamitin in any virtual classroom. Kung halimbawa, mag-introduce tayo ng new concept or mag-review lang tayo ng concepts. Okay, so it is a game show that requires knowledge, collaboration, and strategy to win. 
Okay? So, uh, ang the idea of game kit is um, may mga set of questions and then sasagutan ng mga estudyante natin. Parang game nga din na nag-uunahan sila, nagpapataasan sila ng points. So, this one naman, instead of earning points, student can, uh, can earn virtual currency. Uh, pwede nyo pong palitan yung virtual currency into dollar or peso. And uh, pwede rin silang gumamit or mag-shop for mga, uh, mga power-ups. Okay? So, ito po ay ginag, uh, pwede nating laruin live or pwede naman siyang uh, independent practice or assignment din siya. Okay? By the way, uh, high school student lang po yung gumawa nun, si Josh. And then, up to now, um, kinakontinue nila na mag-update and mag-upgrade ng game kit. Okay? So, grade 4 instructional design, game-based learning, and formative assessment si game kit. And then, uh, don't worry, uh, may bayad siya, may plan, pero you can use the basic account. So, uh, yun lang, of course, limited lang yung mga features. Pero kagaya ko din, I'm using the basic, the free account. So, nai-enjoy ko pa rin naman siya pag ginagamit ko siya sa klase. Okay? So, yan po yung, yung uh, plan niya. Medyo, ma mura lang din, like, for example, 3,000 3,000 pesos per year for pro. Pag pro pass naman is 6,000 then 6,000 naman per year. Okay? How to create account? So, napakasimple lang pong mag-create ng account kay GameKit. So, punta lang kay GameKit.com. Okay? And then sign up. Okay? And then, yun, uh, follow nyo lang kung ano yung hinihingi ni GameKit. Like, for example, this one, you have to provide your email. Any email will do. And then, paano mo siya gagamitin? Educator ba? Student, parent, or outside the school? So, educator. And then, your information, the first name, last name, and your six, um, six character, at least six characters na password. Okay? And, and your school, Philippines, and then area of expertise. So, may mga drop-down naman yan. Mamimili na lang po kayo kung ano ba yung uh, sa tingin yung area of expertise nyo, the grade level, and others. And then, continue. Uh, upon clicking the continue, automatically, mag-create na po ng account si GameKit. But, of course, uh, uh, bago nyo magamit si GameKit, so, kailangan i-verify nyo yung email kung ano po yung pin-provide nyo dun sa, sa uh, pag-create nyo ng account. Okay? So, go to your email, check your email, and then click nyo lang yung verify email. So, makikita nyo man from Team GameKit po yung email. So, you have to click the verify email. Okay? And now, you can enjoy na the game kit. Okay? So, paano ba gamitin si game kit? So, yan po. So, ayan po yung tsura ng ating dashboard. Okay? So, meron tayong kits. Yung kits po is yung ginagamit natin actually kapag uh, ginamit natin si game kit. Para yung, uh, ito po yung magiging, ang tawag niya is kits. Dito tayo maglalagay nung uh, ilalagay natin sa game na mga tanong. Okay? And then assignments then, uh, pwede kasing yung yung kits na ginawa natin, i-set natin, ibigay natin as assignments, homework to our students, so possibly then uh, meron din siyang assignments. And also classes, meron din si game kit na classes. So we're in separate classes, pwede natin mag, pwede tayong maglagay ng mga mga students natin within dun sa sa class na na ginawa natin para hindi labo-labo, di ba? Kasi pwede kasing within a class, mag-compete sila isa-isa and then pwede naman classes to classes. Pwede yon, Okay? And then news, same with other platforms. So, meron silang updated na our news kung meron man silang mga bagong features or upgrade na binibigay. So, para updated yung mga users na game keys. And then, Kit for Lab, ang maganda rin with Kit for Lab is allows your student to create a kit. So, kunyari, uh, meron ka ng ginawang game, tapos gusto ng estudyante na magdagdag siya ng, ng tanong dun sa game mo, posible yon Pwede silang mag-submit. But, of course, uh, as, a, as a teacher or the, the host of the, the game, pwede mo siyang i-accept or reject yung question. Okay? So, yon And then, meron ding uh, other features ni GameKit. The usual, the account information. Pwede, kang, pwede mo siyang i-access uli. Pwede mong i-edit kung magpapalit ka kunyari ng email. Game setting. You may change the currency or the language of the the, the game kit. Ano yung gagamitin? English or, or dollar ba siya or peso siya? And then, kung nagustuhan mo si game kit and you want to upgrade, nasa plan and billing siya. So, sa pro and the pro pass. And then, meron nga pala siyang group. Okay? 
So kung halimbawa uh, isang department lang kayo within ba, mga 20, 20 teachers lang or within the university, so pwede rin meron din sila na, na plan for that uh, subscription. Okay? So paano kung gagawa ka na nung game? So napakadali, apat lang din. So number one is to create new kits. Kit, di ba sabi natin kanina, doon natin ilalagay yung mga questions natin. Uh, na ipapalaro sa mga estudyante natin. So, simply click new kit. And then, ayan. So, answer nyo lang yan. Number two, enter the kit's name, the language, and the subject. Okay? And then, number three, choose a cover image. Okay? So, kalimbawa, a computer yung tinep nyo. So, makikita natin yung iba't ibang uh, predefined natin na, na images. So, pwede natin, um, pwede tayo mag-search dyan. And then, ayan na. Okay, so number four, you have to create your questions now by adding your question and even the correct answer and incorrect answer. So, ayan. Type nyo lang kung ano yung tanong. Pwede nga pala kayo mag-add ng photo, pwede mag-add ng audio. Okay? And then, ayan po, kung makikita nyo, ilalagay nyo lang yung tamang sagot. Yung check button, that means yun yung tamang sagot. Yung X, yun yung mga panggulo or yung mga maling sagot. Okay? So, add kapag tapos na yung question. Okay? And then, kunyari, you have ano na, five questions na, natapos na natin. So, click finish kit. So, yun lang. Ganun kabilis. So, kunyari, ano lang, pang ano lang, pang intro lang kunyari sa subject nyo, uh, lima lang kunyari na tanong para malaman natin na kung nagbasa ba sila ng, ng ano nila, next uh, topic. So, kahit lima lang, di ba? So, yun. Then, finish kit. Okay. And then, paano natin sa ipiplay sa klase? So, ganun pa rin. Go to www.gamekit.com And then, makikita mo, di ba, yung sa account mo, yung mga kits created mo. So, kagaya niya, kunyari yan yung na-create ko, kiklik lang natin yung play live. Or pwede mo naman siya i-assign as homework. Depende kung ano ba yung mas type mo. Gusto mo, gamitin na siya sa klase. Pag nag-play live na, so, ayan, yan yung sample. Pag kiklik mo si play live, so, ilalabas niya lang na yung kit na ginawa mo may limang tanong and then paano mo ba siya ipiplay? Classic ba siya or team mode ba yung gagamitin natin? If gusto mo, di ba, estudyante ang nag-compete nag, uh, isa-isa, classic. Pag team mode, so team mode naman yung pipiliin natin. And then to do that, of course, is kailangan natin ng game code para uh, makuha nila or makapasok sila dun sa game kit na ginawa mo. Okay. So, gagawin po natin yan ngayon. Okay. So, hold your phone, cell phone. Hawakan nyo po yung mga cell phones nyo. Okay. Uh, go to www.gamekit.com. Okay. Or yung iba po, gamekit.com slash live. So, pwede, pe, pero pwede na rin po yung gamekit.com. And then, join game. Okay. Click nyo po yung join game. And then, later po, ibibigay ko po sa yung game code. Okay, yung game code, yung po yung pinaka-importante para maka-join kayo sa game. Okay, and then kapag, uh, during the game po pala, actually, there are a set of questions na pwede nyong sagutan. I-click nyo lang yung tamang sagot. And then, you need to click continue kapag ka gusto nyo mag-move sa next question. But if, for example, ano rin siya kasi, parang um, strategy game, gusto mong mag-level up pa. So, merong shop button dyan. Yung shop button kasi is, Kung marami ka ng uh, virtual coin, pwede kang bumili ng mga power-ups. Okay? So, ayan po. Let's play Game Kit. Grab your phone. Go to www.gamekit.com. Uh, click Join Game. And then, enter the game code. Enter your name. Kahit apong anong, anong name ang gusto nyo. And then, wait for the game to start. Okay po. Okay? So, i-ready ko lang po yung aking sample um, game. Okay. Ready na po? Ayan. Okay. Can you see now my game kit live? Okay. Let's play live. Ay, wait lang po. Ulitin ko lang. Kasi hindi ko po na-include ang uh, system audio. Kasi maganda rin po yung, yung ano nito, background music. Okay. So, ayan. Classic po ang gagawin natin. 
Okay. So you have one minute to finish po the game and then later makikita po natin sa leaderboard kung sino po yung mananalo. Now, the game code is 41867. Okay, sige po, go to www.gamekit.com slash live. And then, the game code is 41867. Ayan, wala pa pong pumapasok. Ayan, Sir Roland. Ay, Sir Roland. NCP. Ayan. Si Ma'am Claude. Hi, Ma'am Claude. Ayan, nadami na. Okay. Sige po. Tingnan po natin yung iba. Ayan. Sige po. Mga 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Sige po. Mga 10. Ako, baka overtime na ako. Ayan po. Si Sir Chris. Hi, Sir Chris. Ayan. By the way, yung mga questions ko po dito are ano po, taken from my presentation. Madali lang po yun. Huwag po kayo mag-alala. And then, may bonus question po ako. Yung bonus po, ano lang yan. Ma medyo mga uh, madadaling katanungan lang po. Ayan. So, we have 22 players na po. 23. Mga 25. Ayan. 24. 25. 26. 30 na nga. Sir. Wait lang po. Ayan. 25. Okay. So, let's start. Ayan. Pwede na po. Start the game. Now, okay, grab your phones na po. Diyan nyo po makikita yung mga tanong sa cellphone nyo. So, nandyan po yung mga tanong. Ipipiliin nyo lang po yung correct answer and then continue para po mag-proceed with new question. Okay? Thank you. 30 na. Start game. From ter, uh, third place po natin is si Miss Sarah. Second is ABM, $8. And ang first po natin is si Miss Leah. So, yan po. Congratulations po. So, yun po for the game kit. So, that uh, that's for my end. Thank you so much and God bless. Hello. Thank you, Ma'am Dang. Thank you so much for giving us your, sharing your insights and giving us a very informative and engaging presentation. Nakaka- uh, sayo yung background music ng game kit that was very engaging. Thank you so much. Um, before we proceed to our next uh, speaker, please allow me to um, uh, share our objectives, which I was not able to present earlier. So to show selected education tools for uh, use using online synchronous session, that's the first objective. And the second one is to demonstrate how synchronous sessions are delivered. Now, before we proceed to our second speaker, may I um, remind our participants to uh, type in your questions in our chat box so that we can have it discussed during our Q&A portion. At this point, may I request once again my co-host, Ms. Grace, to introduce our second speaker. Ms. Grace. Thank you, Mr. Ruel. Our second resource speaker is a licensed electronics engineer. He finished his Master of Engineering major in electronics engineering in Dalasal University, Desmarinas. He is a consistent, outstanding ECE faculty and Center for Innovative Learning Programs awardee and resource speaker. His research interests include 
wireless communications, microelectronics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, and biomedical engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Engineer Joshua Hernandez. Hi, Paul. Good afternoon. Uh, give me a moment as I set up my screen. Just want to check po if my screen is seen and clear and my audio as well. Po. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Engineer Joshua Hernandez po from the ECE faculty from the College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology. And today I will be sharing how I conduct my synchronous classes how I did uh, my delivery and as well as uh, some of the tools I use to deliver um, synchronous assessments. So um, let, first, let me give you a brief background of what I teach. I am I teach this semester mostly uh, uh, mathematics related uh, and mathematics heavy subjects. Specifically, I teach differential equations. And so uh, the focus of my talk this afternoon would be more heavily on the side of, I think those who will appreciate this will be more on those uh, teaching mathematics, because I will be showing how I, uh, uh, how I deliver teaching purely digital, uh, as well as showing the tools I use. So, I hope you can see my screen. It is titled Synchronous Class Delivery and Assessment. Um, I divided this talk into two parts. First, uh, uh, the synchronous class delivery, wherein I will be talking about uh, some of the tools I use. OBS is one, as well as um, PowerPoint. Yes, the ever reliable PowerPoint. Uh, OneNote. Uh, another Microsoft application. Uh, and the second part would be, I would be uh, discussing about uh, how I uh, handle synchronous assessments, formative assessments using uh, some of the tools uh, like uh, QuizIs, Paul EV, you know, which is a survey uh, site. Uh, it's like Mentimeter, but um, I'll be discussing its advantages later and why I uh, prefer it over other um, surveying um, apps out there, as well as grade scope. Um, to some of those uh, uh, instructors who might be handling uh, mathematics subjects, I think this is a game changer as um, grade scope is uh, uses artificial intelligence to group and assess uh, to group uh, various uh, uh, mathematics related uh, problems you know, uh, and activities and grade it by group. So I think this would be quite exciting to uh, some of our math teachers out there. So first, uh, allow me to share with you my setup for my synchronous class delivery. Uh, I teach uh, electronics engineering uh, mostly electronics engineering students as well as um, general engineering subjects. So uh, I, uh, this semester I am teaching not only ECEs but as well, but uh, civil engineering and computer engineering students as well. So my setup is this. This is my current setup. This is my room and my table, my messy table. Um, this is my camera. This is a Logitech C922 webcam. Uh, this is my laptop, uh, which is quite elevated. So uh, uh, for a more um, ergonomic um, viewing. Um, this is my microphone. This is a Samsung Go mic. 
uh, a fairly easy and uh, mobile microphone that can be uh, um, uh, carried uh, anywhere no? because it's uh, just a few inches uh, small. This is my wireless keyboard. Uh, this is my extended monitor. We have uh, uh, an extra monitor at home, so I use this to extend uh, my my laptop's monitor. And as you can see on the screen, uh, this is where I write and uh, solve equations. This is my wireless mouse. And then for uh, solving problems, I use a pen tablet. It's an XP pen tablet. Now, uh, allow me to discuss with you uh, this, uh, the tools that I use in delivering my online classes. And then later on, I will be uh, demoing some of them to you, uh, and if you are interested, you may um, ask questions in the Q&A. So, um, OBS is an open broadcaster software. It can be downloaded online for free. It's open source. Now, I use OBS to interface multiple applications. For example, PowerPoint and OneNote together. Pinagpapaton ko po sila so that I have a more seamless board uh, whenever I solve uh, mathematical problems and show examples to my students. I also use OBS to adjust uh, my camera settings. For example, if my uh, environment or my surrounding is uh, lacking in light, I can adjust its brightness, its contrast, put up some color for saturation, adjust the frame rate to 60 FPS if the camera can carry it or if it is capable of uh, uh, having uh, 60 FPS frame rate per second, and as well as adjust resolution. So OBS is quite a powerful software because it can do all these things. No? Uh, not only can OBS uh, uh, give you a very powerful tool in adjusting your camera setting, it also can also adjust your audio settings. So if you have a, a mediocre or a, a not so good uh, microphone, you can actually um, add filters and improve those. For example, if you if, if the microphone is lacking on on its lower frequency, lower uh, on, on, the, on the bass part, you can adjust. You can install um, equalizer. You no, know? you can even suppress noise while uh, recording and or um, delivering your online class and limit the noise that and set a bar where where um, the hiss and the hums of the laptops um, uh, fan can be uh, uh, you, you can set the uh, the level the level of um, sound being picked up by the microphone if the uh, let's say for example if your laptop has a very noisy uh, fan you can adjust the noise limiter so that it will bypass all of the uh, ambient noise that is uh, uh, perhaps you're experiencing mm -hmm. you can also increase your volume or gain no and uh, a lot more no with uh, obs um, i also use obs to set hotkeys to manage Transitions, for example, if I want to, uh, if I want students to focus on uh, my my camera or my screen or both, you no, know, I can superimpose them, just post them all together. That's how powerful uh, OBS is. So I highly recommend that it be used. Um, not only that, not only can OBS be used for online synchronous classes, it can also be used to record lecture videos so quality lecture videos that is so you can um, record um, 1080p 60 uh, uh, fps uh, uh, video um, recordings or lectures no? and so much more so obs is a powerful software that could really um, enhance your teaching experience and as well as producing your lecture and or um, educational materials. The next thing I use, of course, is the popular Microsoft PowerPoint. Well, in, in my case, since I teach uh, mathematics, 
uh, this is a very handy and uh, very useful tool because I not only not only can I um, type in my equations, but I can also notate those notations, make quick notations no? and um, notes, quick notes on the very um, uh, slide that I am discussing with my students. So I use PPT to create and collate presentation for materials for every lecture meeting. Not only that, I use it as a quick note writing. Again, if um, uh, I'm explaining an equation and I am demonstrating, for example, or illustrating an analogy or, an, or another um, similar equation, I can do that with uh, PowerPoint. The only disadvantage I find with PowerPoint is that whenever I solve a particular problem that is quite exhaustive and tedious, there is limited space for working it out because I am bound by the uh, rectangular interface or the slide that is uh, present. No? And if I erase one line, for example, the solution, it gets erased all throughout. So um, I have been looking for a solution to this so that um, whenever I solve a problem, not only will it be seen by the student, it also gets saved while I write. That is why uh, in, 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 in my search for a viable solution, I have been trying actually many things. For example, the whiteboard um, app of uh, Microsoft. Um, but I have found success in Microsoft OneNote. So what I do is I put uh, PowerPoint in OBS as well as OneNote and then I put one note on top of PowerPoint and I only focus on the uh, area where I could write. No? So I write the problems in PowerPoint and then I write the solutions in one note. That's the idea. Now I use one note as a flexible virtual board to present tedious and exhaustive solutions to mathematical problems. As I've mentioned already earlier, Differential equations is a very exhaustive uh, and mathematically rigorous subject, so it cannot just be taught as uh, something like um, uh, an event or um, uh, just, um, uh, for example, visually or uh, like history. You can just tell it. You must really be able to show the solutions to these problems and hence uh, there needs to be a platform that could handle this uh, rigorous problem solving. And I find OneNote as a good app for that. Not only is OneNote a flexible virtual board to present tedious solutions, it also has a huge and expanded pen options. You can choose the weight of the pen and um, the colors, etc., as well as the background of your um, uh, board or the platform or landscape that you're writing on. Um, the advantage of OneNote is that uh, whenever I uh, place OneNote on in top or on top of the of PowerPoint, there is a seamless board that is created, so that I don't uh, run out of uh, board to write. I just write and write and write and then adjust the slider as it uh, uh, moves the board from one point to the other. So I think I save um, time not only in um, showing the students um, the solution, but also uh, saving the file and then sending it to them. Uh, are already recorded uh, uh, problem sol solving um, material ready for them to access. So that's basically what I use to deliver my synchronous class. I think it would be better appreciated later when I demonstrate it to you. I will now move on to discuss about how I uh, do or present my uh, sync, how I do synchronous class assessments. The first tool I use is Quiz Is. No, it's like it's it's just like Gymkit and the Kahoot. But what I find 
uh, about quiz is the good thing about quizzes is that it's mathematically really uh, good. Um, uh, it can read LaTeX and it has shortcut um, uh, keys so that typing equations wouldn't be that uh, very tedious. You can also, if you have, for example, a list of equations in Microsoft Word or in Microsoft PowerPoint, you can easily translate it to quizzes. And that is if you convert the equations to LaTeX, copy the LaTeX uh, equation or the LaTeX code and then paste it to quizzes. So some people, what they do is they save the, the equation as an image and then upload it to Kahoot or their preferred um, quiz uh, app or website. Uh, quiz is, is um, LaTeX enabled and that's what I like about it. I'm not sure about uh, Kahoot. Last time I checked, I think they have already catched up with that. They, they uh, um, develop, uh, I'm sorry, they, they, they uh, what do you call this? They also enabled uh, uh, LaTeX uh, compatibility. Yeah. So again, if you have an equation in Microsoft Word or in Microsoft PowerPoint, and you want to put it in a game like quiz is, you can simply copy the LaTeX uh, code, con uh, convert the equation in Microsoft Word, from the professional um, equation looking to LaTeX, copy the code and then paste it to quizzes. And then voila, you have your equations already ready for the game or for the assessment. So I'm not sure if I can uh, share my audio with you. Um, and uh, anyone from the tech team, uh, check if my if I could uh, play my audio. Please go ahead, sir, Josh. See you, sir. Um, let me just check. So, uh, let me just share with you a live um, synchronous class that I have recorded wherein I used um, quiz is so and the pop uh, sir can you check what if my audio is Playing. Okay, sir. Uh, hi, please proceed. But right now, um, there's no audio yet. Anyway, let me just share it on uh, the class in YouTube. Sir, can you please check? Is my audio being heard? Sir Josh, right now there's no audio. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for to share my audio, uh, sir? Um, sir, can you please include system audio when you share? Can you please try that, sir? Uh, wait, system audio. Um, ah, ito. okay. Yeah, please. Ayan. So this is um, how I used quiz is in my class. This is a recorded class. It was shot last year. 
So I invited my students to. Okay, let's start. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yes, yes, please. We can hear them. Habol na lang iba. And major for this question, yung ating screen. Nikita. Wait lang. Naharangan, pero sa view ng students, they see the equations. Okay, basa yung. But. Nakita. Ay, sorry. But yes, that's the idea. Um, they will be able to see um, the, the equations and compete with each other. Nakita nyo ba guys sa inyo? Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, they will get um, the result. How many people got it correctly? And how many didn't? Hindi makita. Nakita nyo ba guys sa inyo? So basically, that's uh, how I use quiz is to assess my students. I use quizzes for pop quizzes, exercises, no? for formative assessments as well. Um, the good thing about quizzes is that it has a huge library wherein you can just um, um, search possible um, quizzes. Allow me to show it to you. So I'm going to go to quizzes.com right now. And then, for example, if I want to give out an exercise in derivatives. I'll just have to search it out. And there are a lot of um, readily available quizzes for um, ready to be shared. You know? so for example, this one. Um, just uh, the, another good feature of quiz is, is that you can do a uh, instructor pace wherein the uh, teacher can control the pace so everyone advances through the question together and an, a classic option as well where students can answer at their own pace you know, and then see the leaderboard and live results so not only that you can also use quiz is for asynchronous learning yes you can assign a homework for them if they are, you can create a class here in, in quizzes and then uh, give it to them. Fortunately, you are only limited to, uh, I think, a week no, of uh, giving assessments. You cannot give out more than a month or more than two weeks. It should uh, be finished within the week. Otherwise, you, you can uh, upgrade to their paid services. So. This is a basic plan. You can simply use your um, .edu email to create an account here and then browse and or create quizzes on your own. You can also create here a lesson, an instructor-led uh, experience where slides multimedia are combined with quiz and poll questions. You might want to explore some of that. Um, it's a good tool, but for me where uh, I use rigorous equations using Microsoft PowerPoint and Word. I find it uh, limiting. So yeah, I still stick to PowerPoint and uh, OneNote for my problem solving. So here are some of the um, exercises I have made. As you can see, it has been played 59 times by my students. Yeah, so you can uh, give out um, multiple choice questions even um, uh, fill in the blanks no? in, in, uh, for these uh, quizzes. No? Yeah. So that's basically how I use quizzes. We want to explore quizzes. So <clears throat> yeah, as I mentioned already earlier, uh, another good thing about quizzes is, is that it has a broad database. You can simply search. If you're a math teacher, a high school math teacher, there are a lot of exercises available that you can give your students, or you can create your own even. It has a very nice interface and a very competitive um, environment. Yeah, now the next app, that I want to share with you is Paul Everywhere. No, it's like Mentimeter. No, but the good thing about 
Paul EV is that um, it can be integrated with Microsoft PowerPoint. So if you're a PowerPoint guy and or all your materials are in PowerPoint and you don't want to leave your presentation to go to another website, you can download Paul EV, download the add-in and then create an, uh, an, uh, a survey or a poll inside your PowerPoint and even fetch or, or uh, receive the results of the survey in the very same PowerPoint. So that's how good and how powerful it is. Allow me to share with you a quick uh, introductory about Paul EV. Presentation and you want to get some feedback from your audience. Show of hands. How many of you signed up for office hours? One, two, four, four two, fifty. That's not very accurate. Old voting methods take far too long, and expensive voting systems like this one, well, they're difficult to set up and don't allow for audience comments. Hello? Oh, oh, okay. Introducing Poll Everywhere. Through a simple web interface, Poll Everywhere lets you collect instant audience feedback. Just type in a question, and your audience can respond using laptops, tablets, or even mobile phones. Even your crappy flip phone. Hey guys, what do you think of my presentation so far? Is it A? amazing, B, incredibly amazing, or C, not that great. To respond, just text message the number on screen, or use a custom URL to respond in the web app. You can even use Twitter if that's what you're into. As people respond, results are embedded instantly into your presentation in real time. Seriously, guys? You can also ask open-ended questions. What is your favorite part of my outfit? Poll Everywhere also lets you customize the look of your charts to wow your audience. And for all you spreadsheet nerds out there, you can even create segmented cross-tab analytics. The best part about it is you can try it today for free. So how excited are you guys about Poll Everywhere? A, can't contain it, or B, not at all. Kaboom, instant audience feedback, Poll Everywhere. All right, so that's how Poll EV works. Um, allow me to demonstrate uh, one Poll EV I made for my students when I, um, uh, I think it's my second day or first day of class. So in here, I asked them, how do you feel? Because it was just the start or the beginning of the classes and I wanted to gauge how they want to proceed or what their reactions might be as I uh, introduce quite mathematically heavy topics with them. So here's how I asked them. Um, so here's the question that I gave them. Wait, that's, uh, uh -huh. Oops. And the good thing about here is it has an app. that you can activate the polls on. Wait, let me... Ayan. Wait, let me create a new activity. Reset ata ako ng account, so hindi ata siya na-sync. I'm not sure what happened here. I'm not sure if it's my internet or...
Aha, uh -huh. I think I'm having some that uh, technical difficulties around here. Sayang, it was a good uh, app though. It's synchronizing my slides. Mm -hmm. Sayang, but uh, the idea is that So you're giving a presentation. Let me share that again and try. I'm not sure what actually happened here. Sorry about some delay. Sayang, the link I think is not working. Either my internet is not so fast or that sync activities. Have not been reset. Anyway, so Sayang. This is a good tool, by the way. And what I like about this, as I've mentioned, is that it can be integrated with PowerPoint, as can be seen here. Sayang, hindi lang appear yung link for Paul EV. And um, as you um, present, there's a real time fetching of data. No? So as responses are sent, it gets uh, collated here it's the same powerpoint na pinag insertan nung um, pinag insert anyway sige give up ko na sayang <laughs> but anyway that's the idea mm -mm. you should try it out it's free meron lang siyang i think up to 50 na responses or 70 responses so what i do since ang um, Number of students ko naman is around 30 lang. I just reset it every time I ask a question. So, that's a good... Hindi uh, na siya masama for a free app, uh, for a paid app. So, here's another question that, that I um, raised to my quest, to my students. Oops. Medyo matagal ko na kasi siya bago nagkamit. Yan. So that's and Paul Evie. We want to get some feedback from your audience. So here's one uh, sample that I uh, gave my students. Yung word cloud, no? Um, ah, mamaya pala. But uh, I use Paul EV to survey how students feel to assess lesson impact at the end of the class. No? Here's a sample of how I... Uh, gave out a, a question and a word cloud was generated. So I asked my my students, what are your expectations from this class? So day one siya. Natatawa ko kasi ang pinakamalaking answer na nilagay nila for their expectation for my differential equation class is St. Peter. So <laughs> tawa ko ng tawa uh, doon. It was quite fun and amusing. So you should try Paul Evie. The last um, assessment tool I would like to share is Gradescope. Grading hasn't changed much over the years. It takes longer than you want it to, it can be overwhelming, and it's difficult to understand why students struggled. It doesn't have to be this way. There's Gradescope that enables you to grade paper-based work quickly and consistently. Here's how it works. While using your existing assignments, students can upload their own work, or you can submit for them. 
This lets you grade online, wherever you are. With Gradescope, each question has its own rubric. This student's answer is correct, and grading it is as simple as applying this rubric item. The rubric stays the same for every student's answer, so you can grade fairly and quickly. Here, you can mark this as incorrect and explain why by adding a new rubric item. You then take off the desired number of points and grade the answer. Not only does the rubric evolve as you grade, every grader uses the same rubric and every grader can change or add to it. For every new type of mistake, you add a new rubric item. You can mark multiple rubric items. And whenever you make changes to the rubric, it automatically applies those changes to the answers you've already graded. This allows for a flexible and consistent grading workflow. With Gradescope, you can actually see what mistakes students made on every question. You can download the grades to import them into your own gradebook, and you can send grades to students with just a click. Students love the detailed feedback, allowing them to understand why they missed every point. Join instructors by going to gradescope.com today. All right, for math teachers out there, this is one of the best stuff you'll ever uh, have in your arsenal when, when, when teaching and or marking um, math related subjects. Gradescope is a really powerful tool. Uh, it has an artificial intelligence um, tool in it wherein it can group <clears throat> questions. For example, you can set a template and allow students to answer in that template. And then upon scanning, all the scanned uh, materials will be processed by the artificial intelligence of Gradescope and it will group together all the same, same answers or same questions. And then, for example, kung sa question number one, you have a question, what is the derivative of sine x? No, it will uh, compile all of the answers for that question and then uh, as well as try and recognize your answers. So for example, if the derivative of sine x is cosine x, it will automatically check if cosine x nga yung sagot niya. And that's handwritten. Eh? That's handwritten. So that's how powerful grade scope is. I'm using it now in my differential equations class to give online synchronous exams. So for example, uh, long quiz. My long quiz usually contains um, a math question for problems that students have to answer on pen and paper. What I ask them to do, but uh, I uh, instruct them is to write their solutions on a piece of paper and then take a picture of it and then upload it to Gradescope so that in Gradescope, I will have all their submissions and then from there, group them together and then check them all together. So it's a very handy tool for marking papers. So not only is it uh, capable of um, grouping, collating, it is also capable of giving feedback. So for example, uh, for uh, many students na nagkamali in one area, for example, uh, 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 kulang sila ng class C, no? you can group all those uh, answers together and then put one feedback that you're deducting a point to them because they missed putting class C. So, mga ganun. So, it really uh, uh, makes your checking and marking a little bit easier. By the way, shout out pala sa ilang mga, mga kakilala ko na naandito si Ma'am Joy, Engineer Joy Bernardino, and I think Ma'am Lea Santos. Shout out po. Thank you. They messaged me. I think they're watching. <clears throat> I also use Gradescope to check math problem sets. So, since I teach math, and um, it's uh, uh, the, the learning process, I think, for math is more on uh, the more practice you do, the more better you get at it. So I give out a lot of problem sets, work uh, worksheets for them to to check, uh, to exercise. So I ask them to take a picture of it and then upload it to grade scope. And from there, uh, check the, uh, no, the I, from there, I check the papers. So lesser yung pagkikerry ng papel na chachikan kasi lahat pwedeng online na. Check, check, check lang. Mas madali yung buhay, mas magaan ang buhay. 
So uh, from the two side use, I've asked some of my students, students know what was the best thing about some of, uh, some of the meetings we're in I used and I get pretty uh, good responses from them. Here's one from Anonymous number 99. He said that the instructor clearly explained the new normal of studying and learning. But yung answer number 100 is, I think, a uh, very nice one. Sabi niya, different applications or websites were used in the meeting, such as QuizEase and Paul EV. It was the best because it helps to maximize the use of online applications. Coming ito from a student, ha? and it also makes subject more fun and enjoyable when it is not because it is hard and that is differential equations a math uh, subject no so disregard na lang natin tong favorite niyang best thing about the meeting which is early dismissal <laughs> so i think that ends my presentation uh for this i'll be moving to a quick demo um to show you how i set up my uh, obs powerpoint and OneNote to deliver an online lecture so allow me to share my screen uh, to uh, to stop sharing my screen pala as I move from one app to another. Please give me a moment. Bob. So uh, before I could share my my OBS, I think I need to turn off my camera. Yeah. So as you can see, um, I can't use my camera here sa OBS because uh, it is being used sa Teams. So only one uh, application could uh, use it. So. Here's my OBS. As you can see on your screen, <clears throat> I've set it up uh, such that um, wait lang. let me pull out my recent um, lecture presentation and show you how it works. So here's my lesson 15, 16. Yeah. And so here's a lesson. So what I do with this is I um, create scenes here. Para yung one scene, I camera only. And then yung another screen is PowerPoint and then camera. And then later on, PowerPoint and then OneNote. So I'm pressing this PPT and camera. As you can see, no, nandito na ako sa may taas, upper right corner. No? And then what I do is I open up OneNote from another screen. Nasa extended desktop ko siya. So kapag ka enable ko yung aking OneNote, yan, nakapatong siya dito sa PowerPoint ko. So if I uh, share yung aking PowerPoint na naka-slideshow, yan, for example, this one. So ito yung itsura niya kapag ka um, presenter view, pero sa extended desktop, ito na yung itsura niya, yan. I just need to. Yeah, medyo may, just adjust lang ng kaunte. Yeah. Yeah. And then ipapatang ko pa yung isa ko pang one note. Ayan. So that's how I teach my. Um, how I handle my differential equations class. Ang um, good thing about one note, as I've mentioned earlier, is that. The board or the platform to write is seamless. So I can just move here if I'm finished with from, from left to right. No, if I'm finished with one equation to another. So move ko lang siya sa left, walang problem. No, I can use my panning hand, move it here, move it here. So infinite siya. So hindi siya mauubos. So as you write, masasave lang siya ng masasave. And pedi mung balikan. No. 
Sa PowerPoint kasi, since limited lang yung screen mo, kailangan mo mag-erase. At pag nag-erase ka, for example, at mahabang equation siya, hindi mo na kayang balikan, uh, mahirap, kailangan mo pang isulat siya ulit. So, ang good thing dito is you can go back because it's all saved doon sa OneNote mo. So, that's what I do here sa OBS. Pinagpapatong ko po yung PowerPoint and then yung OneNote so that I could adjust my screen. And then in here, I simply just adjust. For example, kung meron akong microphone dito, I explore here, uh, filter. Ito yung filter niya. Yan. I put on noise suppression, equalizer, I mix my voice, and then gain, and then I set a limiter para kapag ka merong malakas na surge ng gain volume, um, ikiklip niya yun para hindi malakas yung um, dating sa students. Yeah. So that's how I set up my uh, uh, online uh, synchronous class. So another good thing about here is that you can start recording. You can see here, merong start recording button here. So pag nag-start ka ng klase, uh, pag nag-record ko po kasi dun sa uh, platform niya, for example, Microsoft Teams, medyo mababa yung quality niya. Pero pag dito ka nag-record sa OBS, uh, mas mataas yung quality. It can uh, record up to 1080p. So if you're kind of a, uh, uh, a guy na medyo into quality video production, um, you will be satisfied here. So finally, I want to show uh, dito sa YouTube channel ko wherein I um, created a playlist for my students for them to access those videos. Aside from Microsoft uh, Stream, of course, that we have here because some students are complaining that they have limited data, but there are accessible promos sa Globe and sa Smart uh, of YouTube. So they requested, uh, some requested comparing man on sa YouTube. And so I complied. Dito ko in upload yung some of my lectures. So here's an example of a uh, video I created, I produced using OBS. Yan, bagong gupit. <laughs> so here's uh, last one, uh, a demonstration of me <laughs> solving. So, ganyan yung itsura niya when I present with my class. So, para hindi mawala yung parang personal touch, I don't turn off my cam. I just minimize it, put it on the top right corner. Para naman di kind of see uh, Kind of see me, <laughs> may counting personal touch. Parang hindi naman mawala yung ano. Ayan. So basically, that's how I do mine. I hope you picked up something. Medyo rough uh, talaga yung presentation ko as uh, uh, I just wanted to share whatever my setup was. I hope you got something uh, kahit papaano po doon sa aking presentation. Thank you very much. That will be all po. Si Ruel. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Sir Josh. Thank you so much, to, Sir Joshua. Thank you for giving us a very, also a very informative um, presentation. And thank you for sharing those platforms necessary for the delivery of our synchronous sessions. So, um, yeah, let's um, welcome back, Ms. Grace, to uh, facilitate our Q&A. And of course, our first speaker, Ma'am Dang, please join us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Ruel. We already have few questions and uh, you may, for our participants, you may ask questions or you may join our discussion by typing your questions in the chat box. Uh, our first question is from Sir Rolly. I think this is for Mamdang. His question is, wala po bang limit 
sa MST? Um, limits, uh, when you say limits, uh, ma'am, that is number of participants po ba? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh -oh, I think so. Apo. Uh, actually po, um, if for example, we use um, uh, yung regular MS Teams meetings po natin, yung call po natin is usually uh, nasa 250 okay? uh, per call. Pag live stream naman po, normally that is 10,000 attendees. Madami. Opo. Opo. So thank you, Ma'am Dan. Then our second question is from Sir Lino. He is from the University of Negros Occidental Recoleto. So hi, Sir Lino. Um, his question is, how many persons can MS Teams accommodate in one video conference? So I think um, nasagot na po ito ni Ma'am uh, Dan. Same lang po, no, Ma'am? Yes, po, po. Opo. And then um, the remaining questions is for Sir Krishna. So, uh, so, Sir Joshua, sorry. So, Sir Joshua, our first question natin came from Sir Chris. So, his question is, in Paul EC, can voting be made anonymous? I think so, sir. Yes, you can do that. Um, um, nasa functionality lang siya ng, EV, ng Paul EV. You might want to explore more of the app. Uh, it, has, uh, it can be downloaded as an add-in sa Microsoft PowerPoint. And you can also upload, I'm sorry, you can also download the app sa inyong phone. So, doon sa phone, you can enable and disable um, yung pulse ninyo and even reset it. The only uh, limitation doon sa Poly EV, I think, from their services is yung number of people that can uh, be surveyed. I think the maximum is 50. So, hanggang pang classroom setting lang talaga siya. You can... Uh, uh, you can bring it out in a conference of 1,000 people. You might want to talagang ano na, um, acquire their services na, pay for it na. But for us teachers who handle less than 50 people, it's very, very useful. And it has a lot of options. You can create a word cloud. You can create, um, uh, what do you call this? Um, parang yung bar, uh, feelings bar, etc., etc., um, as well as feedbacks and all. So, yun, I hope uh, my answer helped. Thank you, Engineer Hernandez. And uh, our next question came from Sir Art. So this is also for you, Sir Joshua. As these platforms really help our teaching online, what are the cons in using these platforms, especially for our pupils or students? Um, the only, I think, some of the uh, disadvantages of using these tools, because these are all digital tools. So if a user is not that um, wary and or not well versed to uh, digital equipment, maaring magkaroon siya ng uh, problema sa pagnavigate ng mga services na ito. Uh, maliban doon, uh, some of them might require higher uh, specs for their computers. But then again, it, de it depends. Eh. Uh, uh, it depends on what your requirement is and how you want to deliver your material. There are many ways. Uh, kung limited lang yung resources mo, there are many ways to augment, no? use other tools kung hindi siya mag-fit sa'yo. So, ano uh, yung mga disadvantages ng mga tools po na pinersent ko? For OBS, um, kailangan yung computer mo uh, medyo mataas yung kanyang um, requirement. For example, yung kanyang um, RAM, dapat yung processor niya medyo mataas para ma-process niya. Kasi these are all video processing um, software eh. no? So, medyo yung crunching, yung, yung memory crunching ma malakas. So if you want to produce medyo quality talaga, medyo costly siya, and medyo kailangan mo ng malaking equipment. So I think that would be the cons. If you're going to really consider producing uh, quality um, video lectures. So I think that would be ayan, cost. A disadvantage. Thank you. Thank you so much, Engineer Hernandez. And for our last question, this is for Mang Magdang. Pumapasok po ba ang recording ng team sa, sa Microsoft Stream? Ma'am 
Mandang. Hello, yeah. Yes, okay. Thank you. Um before po kasi our uh, Teams meeting recordings, uh, nasi-save po siya sa Microsoft Stream. But for now, nag-migrate na po kasi tayo from MS Stream last October 2020. So, uh, ginawa po natin is uh, nasi-save na siya sa OneDrive and then uh, SharePoint. Ayun po. Ako. Thank you, Ma'am Dan. So, looks like we answered all your questions. Uh, Engineer Hernandez and Ma'am Dan, is there anything else? you would like to mention to our participants? A couple for me, if you have uh, more questions or uh, uh, if you want to reach me out or contact me, you can message me at jrhernandez at dlsud.edu.ph. I'm going to type it sa conversation. Or you can message me here as well sa Teams. And I hope to, I would be, uh, it would be my joy to respond to your questions. Yes, yeah, same din po. If may mga clarifications po kayo or um, queries, uh, I'm uh, happy to assist you din po, especially in synchronous uh, tools or, or platforms po na inintroduce ko sa inyo. So, itatype ko na lang din po yung email ko here sa atin pong um, sub box. Okay, so it uh, looks like we have covered everything. Maraming salamat po. And um, before we call it a day, um, it was, again, maraming salamat po to our dear resource speakers. It was a pleasure to have to have you here with us this afternoon. So, Sir Ruel. Uh, we shall now pres present the Certificate of Appreciation. Ms. Grace, can you, okay. can you also do that? Maraming yeah. salamat po. So on behalf of the organizing team, may I present the certificate. This is for Engineer Joshua Hernandez and Ms. Rhoda Sanares. So DLSUD would like to give the certificate of appreciation to our resource speakers this afternoon in the webinar on education technology tool for synchronous sessions held this 13th day of January 2021 via MS Teams. Signed or Dr. Marco Saez, our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research and brother Gus L. Bucher, FSC, President and Chancellor of DLSED. Again, maraming maraming salamat po, Ms. Rhoda Sanares and Engineer Joshua Hernandez. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Grace. Thank you to our resource speakers, Ms. Dang and Sir Joshua. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Once again, thank you very much to our speaker. I'd like to thank once again all our participating schools. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Maraming maraming salamat po. On behalf of De La Salle University Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research and the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee, we would like to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon. We would also like to thank our technical support team, the uh, uh, LSUD Center for Innovative Learning Programs, and the members of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee, headed by Engineer Rizaldi de Armas, Dean College of Engineering, Architecture, and Technology, Dr. Pat Alcartado, Dean of Education, through the guidance of our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez. Maraming salamat po. Before we finally come to the end of our program, here are some important reminders. And the marker calendar as we still have the series of webinars, our upcoming webinars. So we will be seeing each other once again on January 27, 2021 for the Education Technology Tool for this time a synchronous session. I'll be having the series of the succeeding session as we go on. Now, to access the webinar feedback form and to receive the certificate, this is very important. Kindly log into that particular uh, link, go to courses, click enroll, input the access code. Our access code is B. ETJY-NBYV. You can either go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module or go to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to your profile. If you have any encountered any problems about your registration and your e-certificate, please email webinars at dlsud.edu.ph. Indeed, that if this, uh, this afternoon was a very productive afternoon for all of us. 
And that ends our third online engagement. Again, maraming salaman po sa inyong lahat. On behalf of DLSUD, thank you for joining us. And we wish to see all of you next time. Let us all live Jesus in our hearts forever. Congratulations and thank you Sir Joshua and Mama.